So, I'm deciding to do this because I've noticed Midnight Club 3 has had a bit of a resurgence, especially when it comes to the emulation community. I have also noticed that all of the channels that showcase Midnight Club 3 with these super impressive graphics don't really seem to show or explain how to get the game to look this good. So that is what I'm going to try and do for you today. Now, obviously, the first thing that you are going to need if you are going to do this is PCSX2. You are going to go ahead and head over to PCSX2.net. I will have the link in the description. You are going to be brought to this page and you're going to click latest nightly release. Now, the reason why it's the latest, uh, you want to click the latest nightly release instead of the latest stable release is because nightly releases usually have a little bit more uh, content that might not be uh, fully completed, but should have a little bit more bells and whistles than the, the normal stable version. So what you're going to do is you're going to head over here, you're going to click latest nightly, click X64 quick time, and you're just gonna go ahead and let that install. What you're gonna do is go ahead and find a spot in which you want to uh, install PCSX2. I have mine all over here on my uh, on my games drive, on my emulator drive. Uh, as you can see, I already have a couple here. Uh, this one is mostly just going to be so I can show you guys what to do. But uh, you're going to need 7-zip or something similar. Open up the file. Click on one of them, make sure they're all highlighted, and then you just simply drag and drop them in. Now, obviously, you don't have to rename your folder. I would recommend it just for organizational, uh, just for organization, I guess. So we're just going to name this PCSX2 Test. There we go. And then what we have right here is the emulator itself. So you're going to go ahead and click PCSX2 QuickTime, which is this one right here. It should bring you to the setup wizard. Um, this is mostly stuff that, uh, you know, this is, this is all personal preference. I do like the dark fusion. Um, you could change it. They actually have a bunch. So if you don't like, uh, one, you could try a different one. You could try, you know, whatever. They're just the themes. You're going to go ahead and go through, and then you're going to need to find your BIOS. Now, BIOSes for the PCSX2 are pretty simple to find. All you really need to do is go ahead and type in PS2 BIOSes. And it's going to be this link right here, Retro Stick. Um, make sure that it is uh, an American BIOS. Most of these are. Um, it doesn't have to be, I suppose, but if you're going to be using a North American version of the game, you need to have it running on a North American BIOS because then uh, it basically tricks your computer into thinking, oh, okay, this is a uh, NTSC PS2. So you're going to go ahead and click this download link. And then when this is all done, it is going to go ahead and download the BIOS. From what I remember, it shouldn't be too big of a file. It is not. I'm going to go ahead and open up the file. I'm going to go ahead and click it up. And we are just going to drag. Actually, we're going to drag and drop right into this BIOS folder. So as you can see, there's a couple different ones. I would recommend... Uh, if you're unsure of what to click, I would recommend just drag and drop everything in this over. I'm sure you don't need to. There's only a few select files that you're really going to need out of here. But for the sake of, well, I'm not exactly a seasoned expert on this. That is what I am going to do. So now that you have all of that in here, you're going to go back to PCSX2 and you are going to find this folder in your BIOS directory. So now that that's already there, you can hit refresh list and here we go. Here are our BIOS. And as you can see, each of them have their own flag. This one obviously is the American one, the North American one. This is obviously Japan. And this one is the European versions. So for this one, we are going to go ahead and click the North American version. You're going to click next. Game directories again. This is completely up to you. This is wherever you want to store all of your games. Chances are, if you already have a PCSX2 emulator with some games, you can just go ahead and choose that folder. So here we go. Here's my folder. It's going to go ahead and load that up. It's going to scan the directory. I'm going to hit yes, and it should be fine. 
controller setup is the same thing if you don't i would obviously highly recommend you get yourself a uh, cheap playstation 4 controller or a playstation 5 controller if you do not already have one uh xbox works as well but since this is playstation it makes more sense to have a playstation controller so you're just going to want to make sure that DualShock 2 is selected. Obviously, this controller is not a DualShock 2, but that is what the game is going to recognize it as. You're going to go to Automatic Mapping, and make sure that you have your DualSense or DualShock 4 controller selected. And then you're going to hit Next. And there you go. Setup is complete. You're going to hit Finish, and it should bring up your emulator now obviously i have many games uh yours is not going to look this full if you do not have uh any games available but it will look something like this now as for getting midnight club 3 yourself um i don't know if it is legal to tell you where to get this game for free and so i am not going to do that uh, I am going to trust that you use your own intuition or you use a legal copy of the game in order to download it. I'm not going to tell you to pirate it because, frankly, I don't want to get in any legal trouble. But, once you have the game installed, which you'll see mine is installed right here, you're going to go ahead and right-click and go to Properties. Now I'm actually going to switch over to my my main to show you the settings. I'm going to switch over to my main emulator and then you're going to go ahead and copy all of the settings. So here is my main emulator just for proof. Here is the game. It looks nice and shiny. Everything seems to be working just fine. 60 FPS, widescreen, the map works. I will show you how to do the map mapping to make it work properly and I will give you all of my settings momentarily so what you are going to want to do if you have the game loaded up is you're going to want to go into settings you're going to go to emulation now in all fairness it's been a while since i've really uh fiddled around with these settings because uh for the most part once you have decent enough settings with one game it works for a lot of others so here are my settings normal or i'm sorry speed control i have normal speed set to 100 Fast forward speed, I have set to 200. Slow motion speed, I have set to uh, 50%. And I have speed limiter enabled. Uh, under system settings, EE psycho rate is going to be 300% overclock. This basically just makes the game speed up faster. My cycle skipping is disabled. And my affinity control is EE VU GS. It's the, it should be the first option. I have enable multi-threaded VU1 enabled, enable cheats enabled, and enable instant VU1 enabled. I do not have enable host file system clicked. Um, frankly, I'm not sure exactly what most of this does. Uh, I would recommend not fiddling around with these uh, settings too much if you don't know what you are doing. All right, now we're on to the meat and potatoes. The graphics now obviously this is going to differ vastly depending on what video card you have and how much power your computer has um, I am using a RTX 3060 GPU I have an i7 8700 K processor which is a pretty old processor at this point so um, don't feel discouraged if your computer isn't top of the line but it certainly does help first things first we have full screen mode borderless full screen uh, this is completely preferential. I use borderless full screen because it's easier to, say, switch YouTube videos while I'm playing. I like to watch, uh, you know, podcasts or whatnot while I'm playing the game. Uh, but again, it's, it's totally up to you. Uh, aspect ratio, I just put the fit, uh, fit to window. Uh, you can put it in 4x3 and that should be fine, but we are going to be installing a widescreen patch. So 16x9 is going to be your go-to. FMV aspect ratio, this is basically any of the cutscenes in really any game that don't use the in-game engine. So stuff like the uh, garage cutscenes in this game or the vehicle unlock cutscenes, they're going to be displayed in 16x9. Again, I don't 
think you usually need to, but I'm pretty sure the widescreen patch we are going to install does mess with the FMVs as well. De-interlacing. This is going to change game to game, but for Midnight Club 3 in particular, we are going to use blend, top field first, merge two fields, bilinear filtering, bilinear sharp. Um, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but I just keep it on bilinear sharp just because. Vertical scratch. Uh, just leave it at 100% and uh, your cropping, this is going to depend on game. Usually Midnight Club 3 has this weird bug where the edge of the screen is going to have like a couple lines. All crop does is simply get rid of it. Um, so I have it set to one pixel on the left, one pixel on the top, two pixels on the right and one pixel on the bottom. Now, as for the extra features down at the bottom, obviously enable widescreen patches. That's going to be very important for when we actually install the widescreen patch. Enable anti-blur. Uh, that may, that's pretty self-explanatory. It makes a lot of games look less blurry. Uh, pretty much all of the settings that seem to make the game look better is what I have installed. Vertical sync I have off because nobody wants to play with vertical sync. Green offsets I also have on. Um, I don't have anything on the right selected so I, I can't speak to what these do but uh, this is this is pretty much the first tab we're going to head over to rendering and uh, this is really going to matter to you. I play in six times resolution so that my game thinks it is being played in 4K, even though I have a 1440p monitor. It just gives the game a little added bit of crispness. Now, the, this is the very important thing, mip mapping. If you do not know why mip mapping is so important, one of the main issues with Midnight Club 3, uh, whenever I tried to, to uh, play it, was that the map was not loading up. You're gonna wanna put it on full PS2 mip maps, and the reason being is sometimes the map can bug out a little bit. Even the select menu map, mine is not perfect. It just makes all of the UI and stuff communicate with your computer better. Texture filtering, I have set on bilinear PS2. Trilinear filtering, trilinear PS2. Anisotropic filtering, I have set to 16 times. It's basically, uh, it reduces texture aliasing depending on which angle you're viewing, meaning you'll get much better uh, reflections, you'll get much better, much better borders, and your anti-aliasing doesn't only look good when you're looking straight on a surface. Dithering I have off. You don't need dithering on at all. All it's going to do is add these little weird little dots. I don't know if you could see to your emulation it doesn't do anything you don't need it it's not a playstation one game blending accuracy i have set to full and texture preloading i have set to partial now texture replacement this is where things get a little bit interesting so this is where you will need to get if you do not have it already discord and you're going to want to join the midnight club server it's very important because in the Midnight Club server is where you will find a lot of these emulation fixes. So you will have things like uh, your widescreen HUD, you will have save games. So if you don't feel like actually playing through the game and you just want to, uh, you know, mess around with a bunch of money, there you go. There's a couple of save games, but there's also stuff like the widescreen HUD fix, the widescreen fixes. Uh, and HD textures. Now, in, the first thing that we are going to be doing is installing a 60 FPS patch for Midnight Club. Very simple to do. All you're going to do is head over to the files location, the files sub chat in the Midnight Club Discord, and it's going to be this first file right here. What this is, is it is a patch for Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix in particular, I'm assuming that patches the game to be 60 FPS. You're just gonna click the blue link, you should get a window to open up and it should install. Now, when you install it, what you are going to do is you are going to head over to the folder, your directory where you have your PCSX2 installed. You should have a folder called Cheats. 
If you do not have a folder called sheets, you need to make one and you are just going to drag and drop this into here. So this file will specifically work with Midnight Club 3 because they have the same, I don't know if it's the same uh, label code or whatever, but it's the same name as the actual disc itself reads in the PlayStation 2. I know that's complicated, but trust me, it just works. So that should be your 60 FPS patch installed you shouldn't have to do anything else again i would recommend going into your emulation and making sure that you have cheats enabled uh let me find it real quick just to make sure uh it's somewhere in here there we go make sure under emulation you have cheats enabled and then you should be good to go your game should be 60 frames per second which as you could see mine is now the next thing you are going to want to install is the hd textures pack and this one's pretty simple again you're just going to find the file it's the third one down as of uh, august 29th 2023 that's when i'm recording this so you're just going to click the media fire file it's a safe download it's a little bit bigger it's 300 megabytes not that that's very big in today's but whatever you're going to hit download on the file and it's going to go ahead and download. So once you have it downloaded again, you're going to click it. It is going to open up with 7-Zip or WinZip, whichever one you have. They're pretty much the same. And you are going to be shown this folder. It says Midnight Club 3 Dub Remix. Go ahead and click on that. And this folder is what you are going to drag into your textures folder. There should be one that is SLUS21355 that is midnight club three you're going to go ahead and click on it and you're going to see a folder called replacements now what you are going to do is simply drag this folder in drop it in it's going to tell you do you want to overwrite this folder you're going to hit yes and you're going to let it install after that you can go ahead and delete this file you're not going to need and i'm talking about the one you just downloaded you're not going to need it anymore do whatever you want with it now your game should be looking pretty good but there is one main major problem with midnight club 3 on emulation and that is the blur as you can see my emulation does not have that problem it's looking pretty good uh and um i don't know what exactly causes it on mc3 but on an emulator, it really just ends up looking like you just smeared Vaseline all over your screen whenever you play. Again, what we are going to do is go into this Discord, scroll down until you see the motion blur fix. It's going to have the same file name as your 60 FPS patch. Go to where you have that installed, which it should be under cheats. Open it up. And what I do once you have it in uh once you have it downloaded you're going to go ahead and open it up using notepad you are going to copy all of this uh control c and then you are going to find the file the cheats file that you already have installed once you have it installed you're just going to simply paste it in i already have mine pasted in here and then you are just going to hit save so now your game should be looking pretty good the last thing that you are going to want to install is the widescreen HUD fix. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a widescreen fix. This one actually does come with a motion blur disabler. Uh, you're just going ahead and copy all of this and paste it onto the file that you already have installed. And then your widescreen fix should be in place. Now that should get you pretty good results fairly similar to mine i want to i do want to say that on mine there are a few graphical errors such as hood not lining up properly and um my mini map being a little bit bugged but other than that it's a completely stable and solid 60 fps i just noticed that none of the content creators seem to have had a definitive install guide so i wanted to give mine i hope this video has helped you out i hope your midnight club 3 is looking good uh, if there are any other questions or anything that I might have missed, the people over at the Midnight Club Discord will be more than happy to help you fix it and solve the issues. But yeah, guys, hopefully that helped you out a lot. I appreciate it. Be sure to be on the lookout for my full Midnight Club 3 review, which will be coming very soon. All right, guys. Peace out.